Hi, it's Peter here. Enjoying the summer. It's only 16 degrees and a slight breeze. I just love this type of weather when it's nice and cool and there's not too much heat around. It's been very warm lately, but now it's it's nice. That's why I like to be outdoors here. I still have the XH2S from Fuji and also by chance TDR Design asked me if I want to test the 17mm f1.4 lens and since I happen to have the Fuji at the moment and the lens at the same time says I said why not it's be interesting to test and see how good this lens is and it's uh whoops the mic doesn't hold how very well now and maybe I'll have the hand like this so it will keep on the same spot but yeah but the lens is not very expensive and I wanted to test that how a really cheap or inexpensive lens works on this high-end body because it is a good focal length for APS-C sensor. Real cool looking places to change your clothes to swimming suit. These are, you know, from different air on this beach. This is called Panko, this place, and it's an old beach town. It's a very nice place to photograph by the sea. And testing lenses up in here before. And it's uh, been always a pleasure to photograph here. And there you can see a restaurant called Casino. And there used to be a spa about a hundred years ago, but it's been torn down. But now it's just a, a beach and a casino restaurant. It's not for gambling, but it's called casino anyways. And I forgot to say the disclaimer. Both of these pieces of equipment are not mine. The lens is sent to me from TD Artisan, and I get to keep the lens. But, like always, they did not tell me to do this video nor did they tell me what to say on this video. And the Fuji X8-2S is a loan from Color Colmio, the importer of Fujifilm here in Finland. And this one I will take back, the camera I mean. But let's continue with some photographing with the TD Artisan 17mm F1.4 lens. Unfortunately, it's closed looks like or it hasn't been open yet so cannot get a drink i'm getting a bit thirsty because for me 16 degrees is quite a lot it's hot but maybe i'll sit on the terrace for a little while and talk a few things about the lens now now it's been raining so the most of the chairs are wet maybe i'll sit over here on this one and here you can see the lens. It's interesting because it has the lens structure right there. You can see one, two, three, four, five lens groups and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lens elements. So you can see it from that how the lens is built. And the uh, filter thread is an odd 40.5 millimeters, which is very odd. I don't have any filters for this so if I could use this for video it would be a little awkward to use because it doesn't have any or I don't have any filters that is 40.5 millimeters it's it's interesting and then the aperture ring which is with clicks is in the front this is always what I've said that I don't prefer it having or it being in the front because I like to make the focus because I hold the camera like this and making the focus with this so been photographing a little bit with this one and, and it wasn't one or two times that I've kind of uh, tried to focus with the aperture ring. It's just because I'm used to it. But on the on the other hand, it is quite wide. It's all, all this is the focusing ring. So it is quite nice. And it's not a very long throw either. So, but yeah, that's so far about the lens. And let's talk about the image quality next. Ah, there is a nice brick wall. Mm. Why not do a little Pink Floyd test because it's just another brick in the wall. Yeah, I know. 
bad joke. But let's see if we can we can see how the image quality is with this. As you see from these images, that there is quite a bit of distortion, especially wide open, and the corners aren't really that sharp. But then we have to remember that this is a very in inexpensive lens, so I wouldn't expect perfect image quality. And usually we don't photograph brick walls, so it doesn't really matter what the brick wall looks, because uh, if we lose using this full open, we usually want some separation from the subject and the uh, corners will be out of focus anyway, uh, on sharp area because of the shallow depth of field. So I'm not very worried about uh, the quality of the lens in the corners. To be honest, it doesn't really matter that much. But of course, if it's better, it's better. Like, like always, if you have good image quality from the start and everything is great, then of course it's better. But I wouldn't be too worried about it. it depends on the use. If you use it for a product for photography, for example, then it will make a difference. But if you're using this for street photographs or something like that, then I wouldn't be too worried about it because it's not about corner sharpness. It's about the story and all that. So I wouldn't be too worried about But If you want the best image quality, stop down to roughly a 4 f 5.6, then you will be totally fine. And then in general, the image quality is nice. The, the character of the lens is not that bad, actually. I kind of like it. And what's always about the lenses is that when you have these uh, third-party lenses from China, they always have this slight uncontrast in the image. But that's always something that you can fix. It's not a big problem, in my opinion. You know, usually sometimes the, uh, what do you call the not-so-contrast image is actually better. This did the Artisan 70mm f1.4 lens is fully manual lens, so there is no electronic contact to the camera. And on this particular camera, I had to turn on, take an image without a lens. I had to turn it on because otherwise you wouldn't take a shot or you wouldn't be able to photograph. So because it thinks that there is no lens when there is no electronic contact. But, you know, fully manual lens is no problem. For me, I'm quite used to uh, focusing manually, and there's a good magnify uh, feature in this camera. I'd program it to AAL button, so it's easy to punch in if I want to focus manually. The closest focusing distance is about 20 centimeters, so it's not a very good close-up lens, but you can get some interesting shots because it's quite wide field of view, and getting close with the fire, uh, with the wide field of view is always interesting. Ah, there was one thing I forgot to check is that what mount you can get this lens for. So I will put them on the screen here. And after that, I will have some specs on the screen and we can enjoy the nice beach view that is in front of us here. Yeah, there's some cool water world over there. Yeah, it was a pleasant little photo walk. And to conclude, this is that the TDR is on 17mm f1.4 lens for Fuji X mount is, is a pleasant lens to use. And it doesn't really matter that the image quality is not top notch. I think it's totally fine and it works totally well, so there is no big problems with that either. And the form factor, the size is quite nice, it's not very big and, and okay, for this body it might look a bit odd, but for a smaller Fuji body I think it's totally awesome lens to use. And, and we have to always consider when we're testing lenses is the price range, and this in one is really inexpensive, like I've said many times, and that kind of uh, let's say that, you know, makes it more desirable because if it was more expensive, then of course the image quality would not be acceptable. Always when you're using wide-angle lenses, at least for me, like I said many times, wide-angle lenses are a bit hard to use for, for my because I'm used to having a bit longer focal length. But this one, you know, having something in the front will always make 
the image more pleasant if you have something there to make some depth because just taking an image of something without anything in the front foreground will look pretty boring and if you're more interested in using wide angle lenses there's a video about wide angle photography so that might help if you struggle like i do but hey thanks for watching and bye for now